All right, today I want to show you how to make a hat cam. So what we'll do is we'll go down into the workshop and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, these are the basic things you need. You need a ball cap like this. Of course, you need your camera. It's kind of like to use Olympus. You see the little hole in the bottom. That's the, uh, the tripod. Get a bolt like this that will fit in there. Make sure it will screw in okay. Uh, this is actually a little bit longer than what I need. So I'm going to cut it down uh, to about half the length. But you can probably go to Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up one exact length if you want to do that. I'll show you how I cut it down too. But you also need something to punch a hole in the hat. Here's an awl. What I like to do is kind of heat it up and push it through the bill of the cap and it melts a hole through it and also kind of seals up the, uh, the fibers so it doesn't unravel later on. But you could probably use just an awl or a knife or uh, maybe a, some type of drill. But I'll show you how I do that now. Okay, so I have the little bolt. I cut it down some and smoothed out the thread so that'll work fine. Again, it might be easy just to buy one. Already done. I got the screw, I got a uh, nut fork and washer. So, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take this awl. I'm going to use this torch. So we're going to heat the awl. It's getting hot now. You can see it's turning red. So, what I'm going to do now is just take it down there and poke the hole in the half. Okay. Got it good and hot. I'm going to find the center. I want it right here. Just poke a hole through the hat, just like that. Get it big enough for the bolt. And that's all there is to it. So you just poked right through there, no problem at all. Slick as a whistle. Now, what I want to do is make sure the bolt fits through there. So, put it through. Yep, perfect. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is put a washer on here. I don't know if you need to do this, but. It might help. And uh, you know what? That's going to be too short, so I'm not going to put a washer. I'm going to put this nut on top. Maybe. Screw it down. Tighten it up a little bit. Okay. Alright, now you see just a little bit of thread sticking up. Could have probably made the bolt a little bit longer, but I think that'll work. I'll take a camera. Is my camera with the tri the uh, hole for the tripod? Just put that on there like that. A couple turns. It should go right on there. Yeah, that's good. So, next step is to uh, next step will be to put the hat on your head and figure out where it's pointing. So you're going to have to experiment a little bit with this. Um, you, know, you have to set the hat on your head a certain way and just make sure it's you know right above your eye or whatever and uh, shoot a couple short films see where it's pointing remember it and it work, it'll work fine for you after that okay so I have the hat cam on my head I'm just kind of looking around my yard I know about where to point it because I've experimented a little bit with it to see where see where the camera's aiming they don't want to make any uh, real fast movements just kind of walk uh, calmly the audio seems to turn out okay. I think it's mostly because um, you know, the camera's so close to your face, so it works pretty good. If you want to pick up a relic, just move nice and slow or anything on the ground, you just know where to point it. And that's all there is to it. One hat cam, ready to roll. Uh, in a minute I'll show you how I, what I used for the strap and how I put it together. But it's just so nice you can just drop it, you don't have to worry about it, you're not setting it in the mud all the time, you're not setting it in the wet grass. This is what I'm using for my strap. All it is is a dog leash. This is the handle you hold on to. This is the hook that goes into the collar. I have one with a swivel on it, and that seems to work pretty good to keep the uh, twist out of it when it's going across. Um, this is exactly my height, which gives me the proper range of motion when I'm detecting. So that's the place to start if you want to get one for yourself. Okay, this is how I put it together. First, you take the handle. This is the part you'd hold. You know, the dog would be out here running around. 
So you take your handle, you set it over the machine, like that. Now you do have to unplug this first so you can get it around there. Right, so you snug it up tight right here, just like that, and get yourself some electrical tape. Or you might be able to come up with some other idea, but this is, works for me. Occasionally, it'll, you know, you have to tighten it up a little bit more, but just put some tape around the um, handle just like that. Round and around you go. Make sure it's nice and snug. Once you, have, once you get that snugged up, you take the, the end of the leash that would go into the dog collar, and you just hook it in to the handle here. And that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it for the strap. As you can see, you just drop it beside you, you get both hands free, it's real easy to dig. I have a similar strap for my water machine. It is hooked up a little bit different, and so I'll make another video soon and show you how I hook that up and why you really should use a strap when you're in the water. Now I want to talk to you about underwater viewers. Uh, this is really good for people who can't wear a face mask uh, because they wear glasses or they don't want to put their head underwater. Now these things that I'm going to show you like don't work a hundred percent but they're pretty good. They're really good like if you're in a kayak you can kind of like look over the side of the kayak and put it up to your eye and see what's going on underneath. So let me show you what I'm talking about and I'll, we'll do a quick demonstration down at the river in a few minutes. Okay, this is what I've made up. I basically have two different sizes. Uh, this is a big one I have. And all it is is just a piece of plastic pipe. I'm not even sure where this came from. It's just something junk I had laying around. And a piece of plexiglass or other type of hard clear plastic. So that's basically all it is is a tube. What I did is I cut a piece of plexiglass about the size of the tube. I attached it using this, which is just goop, and then trim the edges a little bit. You can see where the goop is on the edges right there. So you just want to make it watertight. Here's a smaller one I made that I carry in my kayak sometimes, and it's just a piece of, uh, I don't know, it's about what, two inch PVC, inch and a half, something like that, and with a little piece of plexiglass on the end. But what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to look down inside it like that, and hopefully be able to see stuff in the river. Let's go down the river and I'll show you how this works. And here we are at the river. Uh, this is pretty close to my house and it's actually a good spot to show you how to use one of these things. Because you notice the current is kind of swift. So you can't really see underwater very well, although the water is really clear this time of year. I'll just to give you a little history lesson. This is dam number four on the Potomac River. And uh, it's just uh, downstream from my house. The land over here is actually park service, so you can't go detecting on that or anything like that. But this is a really good place to demonstrate how one of these things work. So, let's get to it. If you look, you can tell that the water is fairly clear, but you can't really see the bottom. So what I'm going to do is take this quarter and just drop it, and uh, we'll check it out. Whee! Let's take a look at this thing. I mean, if you look down right now, I can't even see it. Watch what happens when I use this thing. See how clear that is? Isn't that cool? Oh, there it is. It's kind of on its side now. See down in there? Isn't that neat? Now the one thing you really have to watch out for with this is that uh, you have to stick your head down like in the pipe almost because you notice you can see all those reflections from the sky behind me makes it really hard to see sometimes, although this isn't too bad. But yeah, you can see it just as clear as can be right there. Alright, that's what it looks like when you have the viewer. There's the quarter right there. As clear as can be. I mean, it looks a lot better not looking through the camera, of course. But uh, yeah, you can see the bottom. If there's anything else of interest in here. Look at that, there's a spoon. I didn't notice that before, but you know, if that was treasure, that would be pretty cool. You can even go over, you know, like in the foam and look around. So if you lost a ring or something, you knew something was here, look at that. Right through it. So there you have it. This is the little underwater viewer. It works great. Um, I mean, it's better if you can go under with a mask and a snorkel and stuff like I normally do. 
But on a day like today where it's like in the 50s, it's pretty chilly. I mean, you could grab this thing, go down the river and poke around. You might be able to find something to eat. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little something. And if you have any questions about how to make it, just drop me a line. So let's look through the viewer. And I think you'll be amazed at how easy you can see this thing now. I'm going to have to brace it on my legs because, well, just went over my boot. Oh, no. That wasn't very smart. I can't even stand up. It's so slippery down here. Okay, let's try it again. What I want to show you today is how to use a mask and snorkel. Well, not so much how to use one, but how to keep the glass from fogging up all the time. For you guys that have actually gone out into the rivers and tried this, you've noticed that the glass wants to fog up all the time. And it's really kind of a pain because you can't see very well. And most people will just take you know, the mask off and rinse in the water, put it back on and keep going. Three seconds later, it's fogged up again. I'm going to show you two things you can do together to help keep your mask from fogging up so much. And here's number one. Don't get grossed out. Okay, you can see there is fog on the inside of the mask. That's not good. And this will be completely fogged over in no time underwater. So here's what you have to do to help get rid of that fog. Oh my God, look at all the rings down there. LOL. Anyway, so here's the mask, okay? I like to use this kind with the big wide glass. And I don't know why, but I just like it better than the other kind. I've used this thing for years. But anyway, first thing you want to do is get the mask wet. And then what we do is from the depths of your lungs, as far down as you can possibly get, you're going to want to hawk up a big old loogie, a big bowl of spit. And you're going to spit it onto the glass like this. I'm not actually going to go down deep in my lungs for the demonstration, so, but the slimier it is, the better. Okay, got a little bit of spit in there. Just rub it around with your fingers, just like that. Okay, again, if it's really slimy, it works a lot better. If you want to, you can give it a little rinse, and that's step one. Now, the next step is probably the most important step, and the step that almost no one knows about, but you're going to right now. You have to make your face colder. The reason it's fogging up is because you're putting on the cold mask that you had in the river, and your face is really warm, okay? And you're going underwater and it's cold, so the warm air inside the mask is reacting with the coldness outside and causing it to fog. And here's what you need to do to stop that. You have to get your face wet, like this. Okay, get your face good and wet. And you may have to do this a couple times in the beginning. But now when you put your mask on and you go underwater and your face is wet and it's cooler, it won't fog up as bad. Trust me. Would I pull your leg? I don't think so. I just want to do a quick video for you guys to show you how I waterproof my uh, Garrett Pro Pointer pinpointer. You've seen me use this in the videos and I've talked about how I how I waterproof it, but I just wanted to show you real quick how, how that's done. Uh, Garrett probably won't be really happy with you if you, you know, do this though and stick it underwater and get wet and break it, which I actually did one time. Um, but uh, So probably going to avoid your warranty. But again, you can use this underwater or just on land too, either one, so it really doesn't matter. It seems to work fine either way. But let's take a look at how we do it. All right, so let me just do this real quick. Uh, there's a couple of different things I use to get this thing waterproof. Let me just start out with a, uh, I start out with a putty. This is a non-hardening putty that plumbers use. I'm sure you can get something like this at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, what I do with the putty is uh, three things. One, I uh, put it on the threads here over the battery compartment. Keeps it nice and dry. Some guys say that they just use a gasket, but I don't know. Didn't have a gasket, so I just use this, and it works fine. I put a little bit of putty in the speaker hole and a little bit of putty on the push button. And the reason I do that is so that if I ever want to take a scoop off, it won't stick inside those uh, inside those pieces. Then what I do is I take some goop. This is RV uh, sealant, but you can use shoe goo or anything like it. And you can see it's just the uh, other stuff here. Put a layer over the speaker hole. I put a couple of layers over this this piece here. 
uh, over the course of a few hours. And I also put a little dab on the light. Another thing I do is I attach a lanyard to the uh, pro pointer and I tie it on there a certain way and then I goop it on there. And the lanyard um, will be tied to the holster which I also tie to my belt. So you can never lose it. And if you're in the water and you lose this thing you're probably never going to see it again. And I've seen guys lose these things on land too. So uh, this way it will always be with you. Alright, so that's about it. You know, once you get it all back together, you can see it still comes on. And it works just fine. Uh, you can still see the light, no problem. It makes plenty of noise. So you can use this in the water, or you can still use it on land. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that gives you some ideas of how you can waterproof your pinpointer. Again, I've been using these for years like this, and it's worked great for me. So good luck out there.